Hey guys, Lance from Learn to Play Games. We're here with Steamforge today on Gen Con 2016. This is day four. We're all pretty tired, but we're here taking a look at uh, Dark Souls. So can you tell me a little bit about what Dark Souls is, what kind of a game it is, and what we can expect of it? So Dark Souls, the board game, is a dungeon crawl. Okay. People have played a lot of different dungeon crawls, and this is one that we think brings some new elements to the table. Okay. One of the biggest things is that oftentimes, if you die in a dungeon crawl, mm. you've lost the game. Okay. Uh, in this case, because it's Dark Souls, yeah. you're going to die. <laughs> uh, anyone who's played the Dark Souls video games for any length of time has seen you died, plastered big and bold and red across the screen. Absolutely. So in Dark Souls, it's not about never dying like some dungeon crawls. Mm -hmm. Instead, it's about learning. Okay. So as you fight different encounters, you see what's ahead of you, and hopefully you get better tactics against those encounters. Okay. You get better equipment. You level up your characters. And eventually, you'll be able to defeat that encounter, get its souls, mm -hmm. use that to get better, defeat the next encounter okay. after maybe a few tries, and eventually take on mini bosses and main bosses in the uh, big kind of set piece encounters okay. that define the game. OK, cool. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at this. So Dark Souls, the board game, is a fully cooperative dungeon crawl. No one has to play the bad guy. You all work together as a team. It can be for two to four players. Uh, and that will kind of allow you to play with different size groups, but also it is geared so that the game is still fun and enjoyable and challenging no matter how many people you have. As a group of four, you'll have more health and stamina to work with, but at the same time, you'll have more time between individual activations of your models. So my guy will go, then the bad guy, then your guy will go, and then the boss. So it alternates activations between the player characters and the enemy models in the game. At the start of the game, we've got very basic characters with basic equipment, can't do a whole lot. So what we need to do is gather some souls. In the Dark Souls world, that happens by defeating our enemies. So we'll go to new encounters, and those will be on tiles about this size, and we'll have different tiles set up, all surrounding the bonfire tile. The bonfire tile is where you go to spend those souls. You can upgrade your characters by increasing their stats here on the character boards with different tiers of stats, and that allows you to equip ever better equipment. We have here an equipment that requires you to upgrade your strength a bit and your faith a bit in order to use this instead of your starting equipment. So you'll find various equipment over the course of your adventuring, going through this dungeon crawl experience, and you will also, at times, be defeated by your enemies. You want to use the knowledge you gained and the souls that you hopefully are gaining along the way to make yourselves more ready for what's to come. In the demo that we're doing here at Gen Con, we're focused mostly on one of the boss battles. These are the big set piece fights in the Dark Souls world, and they also have like kind of the biggest impact on the game. You certainly want it to prepare for them, there are ways to, through various encounters that you can learn some of the boss's moves even before you get there via the tombstones that many people might have seen in uh, the Dark Souls world and that will be actual tombstones out on the board in the board game. Uh, and eventually when you get to the boss fight, you want to watch its patterns. Just like a boss fight in a video game, bosses have certain things that they do. And as the behaviors are resolved, they stay in the same order. So the boss behavior deck will follow the same patterns. If you're watching carefully, you'll know, OK, next up, the boss is going to come towards us very quickly and do a big attack. Let's spread out. Or the next attack, it's going to just back up a bit and attack anyone near it. We just have to be not behind it right now. Bosses have strong points and weak points as well. For example, when it uses this move, it's then weak in its right arc as we see the arc markings on the base that mimic the arc markings on the card. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just play a couple of turns to show how the boss moves, how it attacks, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit more about some of the other aspects of Dark Souls, the board game. So at the start of the fight, the, the first person to activate is actually the enemies. We flip over the first card of the boss behavior deck, and it says that the boss will move forward two spaces, screaming towards us from the very beginning of the fight, and then attacks the character 
who is closest, or in the case of a tie, the character with the aggro token. Uh, these are, it's worth noting, these are not all final, final components. Uh, we will have actual punch out tokens for many, many things in the game, conditions, tokens, but all of that is still being, the gra final graphic design is still being done. The game itself will be completed and start production very soon and will ship out to Kickstarter backers, late backers, and retail backers in April of this coming year. It will then be available to the broader public a short time after that. Uh, if you haven't backed yet, the late backing closes in mid-August, so if you want to get the first six expansions thrown in for free as part of the base game, get on that. Head over to steamforge.com and uh, or look up the Dark Souls Kickstarter and go ahead and join in on the late backing. So the aggro token we're going to say is on your warrior here, and so that's who the dancer is going to attack first. This is a five damage attack, and you have two ways to try to avoid damage. You have block, which is this first shield symbol here, and you'll add up the block of all the equipment you currently have. Yours would be two black dice. Black dice are pretty good. They only have one blank on them, and they do have a couple of twos, but even better are the blue dice, and even better than that, the orange dice. Blue dice have no blanks and even have a three, so you'll be getting better equipment as you go. You also have some choices to make, though. Your character has a lower block than the Herald with the equipment we're currently wearing, but your character has more dodge dice, which is the other way that you can avoid an attack. Dodge dice are all or nothing. Rather than ablating the attack by uh, a little bit at a time, reducing the damage, instead, a block is based on the card itself. This is a two dodge card, so you would need two dodges to come up successfully to dodge the attack. When you dodge, just like in Dark Souls the video game, you also roll to a new position. So you could move to a different node on the board that's adjacent to where you are. Uh, in this case, let's go ahead and have you block, since two dodge is pretty tough. We'll use two black dice based on the block of your shield and your armor. And two successes mean we reduce that five down to just three damage. Damage comes in from the right side of the board. Mark that with red three red cubes, uh, the right side. And stamina is what comes in from the left side of the board. If you ever have no blank spots remaining, you have died. Uh, we don't have a big screen that flies up in front of the game. That'd be pretty cool. But anyone who's played Dark Souls has seen that you died screen more than once, I'm sure. So, Dancer has attacked. It's now our turn. The warrior is going to go. At the start of the player character's turn, they heal some of their stamina. If there was stamina used, you would remove up to two stamina cubes from the board. And that represents in the video game how your stamina slowly comes back over time. If you use a lot of moves at once, it uses more of the stamina and takes longer for that to recover. Works just the same in the board game. So in this case, you haven't used any stamina yet. So we're gonna have the warrior really try to deal some damage to the dancer by moving into its weak arc. We have the arc markings here, so you wanna get into the right side. So your first move every turn is free. So one node of movement to move over a little bit and get toward that weak arc. The weapons you're using have a range of zero, the range symbol there with a zero. So you wanna get close enough to do some damage. Go ahead and put one stamina cube on your stamina track to move another time. So you will move right into the node the dancer is on in the arc where the dancer is weak. Now, you have some choices to make here. If you use the three stamina attack on your axe and then also use the two stamina attack on your shield, you'll have done a lot of damage. But that would require five total stamina, which would put you at how much life remaining? One. Just one. So that's a dangerous way to go. Uh, you could also be hyper conservative and say, oh, I'm just going to do my light attack from the battle axe and use no additional stamina at all. Just make one single attack with a blue die, plus, because you're in the weak arc, 
an additional black die. Or split the difference, do the light attack and the shield, or just the heavy attack. So there's choices to make at any given time in the game about how much you want to risk versus how much you want to deal damage to the enemy. Well, let's go all or nothing. We're going all in. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna do a shield attack for two stamina. Go ahead and add two more stamina to your board. That's two, two black dice, plus one for the weak arc. It's gonna be a lot of damage to the dancer. We've got three successes. The dancer has one armor, so it'll be two points of damage. Final game will have dials that you can turn to very easily change how much health they have. You don't have to worry about getting marker on your fingers like I've been doing all weekend at Gen Con. But we've done some damage, and now the axe. Even better, three stamina, but a blue and a black, plus another black for the uh, weak arc. So four more points of damage. Because of the armor, right? Because of the armor, yep, five minus the one, you got it. And so you've done a healthy chunk of damage to the dancer. The problem is you uh, are almost certainly going to die if the attack covers the node you're standing on. So that might've been a little bit too aggressive, but let's see, let's see what happens. Maybe, maybe it'll move right out of the way and leave you alone, we, we don't know. I, I'm curious myself. Let's see. A right wide swing. Okay, so it's going to move into the node directly in front of it with a push. So you are left behind. I'm pushed out. And so I've got to choose one of the nodes in that arc to be pushed to. Uh, and I will choose this way. Now, Unfortunately, then it makes a left turn and attacks within range one a character, uh, or not a character, it attacks these green arcs. So it will attack the front arc. Whoa, you were right. You, you aren't going to get hit. Let's look at that here. You are standing right in the weak arc where it doesn't swing. It takes the sword, slashes it down across the front and the right, so I got hit, you are mercifully safe from this particular <laughs> attack, look at that. So this is a seven damage attack with a dodge of just one. Harold's current armor makes him a lot better at blocking than dodging, but I'm gonna go ahead and risk it, I'm gonna dodge. I put my one stamina down and I only have one die of dodge on my armor, but I only need one success, let's see. I dodge out of the way. So I'm gonna roll into a new position, get over nice and close to the weak arc, and then on my turn, the aggro token will move to me. I'll use my free move to move on in, and I heal to st two stamina at the start of my turn, so I'm free to use my big attack, three stamina, have a nice heavy attack on the Morning Star, which is a good upgraded weapon that I have here, two blue dice, plus a back black for the weak arc. Three more damage. Nice big hit to the dancer. And it goes back and forth like that until we've damaged the dancer enough to reach its heat up. Uh, that'll be marked very clearly on the dial, nice big piece of fire or something in there. And the heat up means that we no longer know the order these are coming in. Rather than just going through the deck and then kind of starting over, kind of that boss pattern feel, we'll shuffle in a random heat up card from the selection of heat up cards for the dancer, and that represents the boss getting angrier, more aggressive. Uh, in the case of the one we're using in the demos, the heat up card is a pretty normal thing that, it, that an attack would do. It moves a bit, makes an attack in a bunch of arcs. You could dodge it, you could block it, then it turns around to get ready for later, but it does that twice. So you might have to block or dodge two separate times against the blade dance here. Different bosses heat up in different ways. If anyone remembers the smelter demon from Dark Souls where he stabs that giant sword right into his furnace belly and pulls it back out, uh, you replace the entire deck for that particular enemy. So it's a different experience. And then all of his attacks are fire attacks that deal magical damage. So 
There's a lot of different ways that we have to do different things with the bosses, and each one has its own personality that we tried to capture as faithfully as we could from the video game. So that's the basics of Dark Souls in terms of how the boss fights work, the encounters that, come, that lead up to a fight. You can choose to do kind of one set of encounters and then one boss fight and have a game you could play in about an hour. The recommended way to play, uh, kind of the ideal is to for a game night, is that you have uh, some encounters that lead up to a mini boss, then you kind of get some more treasure and some more experience, spend your souls to get better stats, to equip even better weapons, uh, and then you do some more encounters and then a main boss. And that's a two to two and a half hour game night sort of experience. And you can even play longer than that, kind of a campaign sort of mode where you fight different mini bosses, then different main bosses, and your characters progress at a slower rate, but you get to see a lot more, uh, but it will take a lot more time. So you'll want to do that over several different game nights. The game also scales very easily in terms of difficulty. You can add more uh, what are called sparks to the bonfire, so that if you die, your bonfire will lose a spark. You're going to die, that's expected in Dark Souls, but each time you do, one spark will be removed from the bonfire until it eventually goes out. It can make the game a little easier with more sparks, a little more diff difficult with fewer sparks. You've got a lot of options in terms of being able to make the game what you want it to be as players. The recommended level is uh, good for people who like classic dungeon crawl board games. For people who want that more punishing Dark Souls experience, you can make put in more difficult encounter cards, you can reduce the number of bonfire sparks. Uh, for people who want a more casual experience, you can play the game uh, even with a younger audience just by tweaking things. Ch make the encounter a little simpler, hand pick the boss behavior cards that you want to use. A lot of options. There's also a lot of replayability because an individual boss has a behavior deck that you'll choose randomly from each time, but you've also got a bunch of different bosses to choose from. Also lots of different player characters, so lots of versatility within the game. Do you have any questions or comments? All right, well that is Dark Souls the board game. I hope you guys are interested. All right, so I hope that gives you guys a better idea of how this game works. Um, so besides the bosses, what can we expect from a regular encounter? Because we haven't quite seen that yet. So leading up to those bosses and mini-bosses, how do regular enemies work? And are they going to be punishing us just as bad as everything else? <laughs> well, a regular encounter can be worth one, two, or three souls. Okay. So those have very different difficulty. And typically in the early part of the game, it's towards the lower end, a lot of ones, a couple of twos here and there. And they have different enemies that appear on different nodes as well as different terrain features that can appear on the terrain nodes. So okay. you have things like barrels that you can roll through and break, treasure chests, gravestones that give you information about okay. the boss you're going to fight. And the enemies themselves don't each have their own behavior deck that you have to flip through each time. Yep. They just have a simple behavior card. It uses the exact same symbol language. Okay. So you once you've learned how to do any old grunt, you can also do a boss. So you can do every uh, okay. enemy that's in the game. Cool. And then they're geared towards different types of attacks. Some of them attack whoever has the aggro token, some attack who's ever closest, some just stomp around and hit whoever's in the node they move to. So you've got different behaviors among the different types of grunts, as well as the different types of bosses. Okay, and like in the Dark Souls uh, video game, do your characters upgrade or can you visit like shops in between sessions if you're playing campaigns to get new items and abilities and things? Absolutely. The okay. soul value on the cards gives your characters souls. Okay. And you spend those souls to upgrade your stats on your character card okay. so that you'll go from having your starting strength, dexterity, intelligence, and faith to having higher levels of that. Okay. And some characters are better at certain stats than others. So the warrior upgrading the strength one time will be able to use high strength items fairly well, okay. whereas it might take the Herald a couple of times. Okay. Uh, or a Pyromancer, or a Sorcerer even more. Gotcha. It just depends on the character, and because that means every character can use almost every item if they spend enough souls, mm -hmm. uh, which is true to the video game, 
Okay. We did want to keep kind of a board game element in there sure. where the characters have their own personality, too. Yeah, yeah. So no matter what equipment you're using, you have one base ability that you can use one time per spark. Those bonfire sparks okay. we talked about. Yep. And in the case of the Herald, that's this perseverance ability, kind of healing the stamina of the party, letting them fight longer. Nice. In the case of the Warrior, it's an offensive ability. He's able to make a free attack oh, wow. into a node. Okay. So... That way we've preserved some of the character that people who are kind of more on the board game side like to play. Yeah, but yeah. we still have an equipment system that's very familiar and fun for our big Dark Souls fans. Awesome. Yeah, it looks fantastic. I got a chance to try it out earlier, and uh, yeah, I, I died quite a few times. But it was, <laughs> it is a lot of fun. I can't wait to get my copy of it. I backed the game myself, so I can't wait to dig into it and see all the nice stuff that you guys have got coming to us. Uh, for those of you watching, uh, stay tuned as well. We will be doing a full Learn to Play video as it gets closer to release. And uh, other than that, definitely check it out. It is a fantastic game. So see you guys later. Thanks.